with five years of wool growth on top of Ben, there could be just about anything lurking underneath that fleece. On this week's Best of Bondi Vet. Those burns look pretty nasty and I think if we don't get onto them quickly, they're going to get infected and that's not going to be good news for her at all. I never understand how people can be cruel to animals. You can see right through to her skin and you shouldn't really be able to do that at all. You've got to see this one, Chris. He's like nothing you've ever seen before. Mm. Poor fellow, he's only just come to us yep. and we really need your help because we've got to get him the best welfare outcome. He's, he's in a bit of a bad way. Let's have a look at him. Where okay, are you? he's over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He'll pick straight it up away. straight away, yeah. Yeah. Look at the size of it. When I first see this sheep, all I see is a big round mound of wool with a little face in the front. So where did he come from? Legend has it that he survived the 2009 bushfires that um, in Kilmore East, um, and he's just been roaming through the bush since then. So he's escaped shearing for, what, at least five years. Yeah, it's amazing that he's alive today. It's extraordinary he can even walk around with that amount of wool on. It is, and you can see he's having a little bit of trouble walking there. I mean, the worry I have is that he could have any sort of problem lurking underneath that wool. I mean, fly strike, any sort of skin infection in there. So really, before we even think about shearing, we need to work out whether he can handle shearing. Let's have a look at him. OK, as you can see our friend down here. His name's Ben Hall, and he's certainly a bit of a bush ranger. This sheep is named after a famous Australian bush ranger. Ben Hall, who evaded capture for years and years and actually lived in this local area. You okay if I grab him? Yeah, you hop in there. Ben Hall, the bush ranger, was eventually captured and justice was delivered. Catching this Ben Hall could prove to be even more difficult. Well, it's Ben 1, Chris 0. Oh. <laughs> I don't like being beaten. The wily fugitive sheep has spent five years on the run after fleeing devastating bushfires. It's not that I couldn't catch him, it's just that I thought it would be easier <laughs> and quicker we didn't want Chris to have you guys. Ben is limping under the weight of his heavy fleece and Chris is concerned the thick matted wool could be causing other health problems. With five years of wool growth on top of Ben, there could be just about anything lurking underneath that fleece. From bacterial infections to parasite infestations, he could even be fly-blown. Good job. Putting the cuffs on now. I know, it's like the law finally caught up with Ben Hall. Chris, Pam and the boys now need to move their captive to the shed. Yep, yep. let's go. So we'll walk him. Oh, he's bucking it, isn't it? But Ben's not going anywhere without a fight. OK, buddy. OK, Ben. Let's just go with it now. Come on. Ben Hall is an incredible miracle. He's a testament to the will to live. It's amazing. He's, he's now taking three of us for a walk. <laughs> just like you and I would try and survive the best we could out in the wild, Ben Hall has done that and he's done it admirably. But his time was up. I'm going to try the impossible here. He's got, you know, a foot of wool there. And that must be pulling on his skin too, yeah. mustn't it, poor fella? I couldn't believe when I put my hand in, it was the length of my arm, that much wool. That, that is an incredible amount of wool for a sheep to have when considering we shear them, it's about that much wool. I'm trying to listen through a lot of wool, but I can just make out his, his heartbeat there. So, I mean, it's certainly elevated. He, just everyday life for him is, is a stress at the moment. So let's shear him. OK, let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Fiercely protective Pam can't relax. She's now worried about how Ben will cope with being shorn. Look, the worst case scenario with these sheep is that they could suffer a heart attack because of the stress that they're under. We're lucky that we've got Chris on hand to monitor him throughout the procedure. I wouldn't have peace of mind if we didn't have that happening today. <laughs> how are you? Hey. Shearer. Hey, Tony, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris. You want a hand with that? Um, if you can grab my toolbox, that'd be good, thank you. Yeah. Shearer Tony Adams has now arrived right. to give runaway sheep Ben Hall his much-needed haircut. Ever seen that much wool? No. With four or five years on him? Yeah, that's what we think. We are very, very fussy with anyone who is allowed near our animals, and we have the most wonderful shearer that we've found who is very gentle and compassionate with our sheep. Should be right at the tip in. 
Hello, mate. So you want to grab them all by yourself? Yep. Tony weighs about half of what I do, but seems to have about three times the skill when it comes to catching sheep, because he goes pretty close to nabbing Ben all by himself. Usually, if you tilt the head one way, roll him his back end. Yep. <laughs> Not a good look. That's right. Um, Pam? It's quickly becoming obvious why Ben has been so hard to subdue. He's a ram. He's, um, he's all man. The first thing we notice the moment Ben goes onto his back, well, it's hard to ignore. He has enormous testicles. Wow, that's, uh, that's quite something. Most lambs have something called lamb marking, where they're castrated, they're given an ear tag, they're drenched, they get the full works. Obviously, Ben wasn't around for that day. He escaped with everything intact. See that? Another month and that'll be fly struck. Yeah. All through here. You're lucky, mate. He's always going to find this overwhelming. There's just no real other option. Shearing isn't just like a simple haircut. For a sheep, it's a full-on audiovisual experience. The stress of those sounds and being forced into a new position for that period of time, it can be enough to cause a heart attack, which can kill him. Let's just give him a quick little check halfway through now, mate. Just... At Edgar's mission, Chris is closely monitoring Ben Hall to make sure the shock of a long overdue shearing doesn't lead to a heart attack. For an animal like him, who's a prey animal, to be held in a strain and not be able to move, that's one step away from being eaten by a predator. So it's incredibly stressful for the animal. Okay. He's coping. Yep. All right. He's coping better than me. I'm very stressed. I can tell. <laughs> Do I put it on you as well? <laughs> Tony is struggling to remove five years' worth of heavy matted wool. The biggest challenge that Tony's facing is the weight of that fleece is pulling on the skin. Each time it pulls the skin out, it means that those shears of Tony's all too easily nick the skin. It's the unfortunate byproduct of how much wool Ben's carrying. Wow. Amazing job. I hope you feel better, mate. That's a great outcome. Oh, and he's having a week. Great. Probably never felt so easy, has it? That's right, yeah. Once Tony is finished, the pile of wool is bigger than Ben. And Ben's not a small sheep, so it's time to weigh it. <laughs> he was carrying that around. <laughs> no wonder he's fit. Yeah. You got any scales, Pam? There you go. Almost 18 kilos. Not bad. Is that your biggest ever? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. He's definitely a good boy. With Ben's excess wool removed, Chris is anxious to investigate what's causing his nasty limp. Just strong. <laughs> Come here, buddy boy. Yeah, you can see he's oh. not liking that. So he's got some arthritis in this this elbow joint of his. Right. Now, that could be the result of an injury he's picked up, or it could be wear and tear. I'd say it's probably a little bit of both. With dogs and cats, what we say with arthritis is get them to lose weight. <laughs> he just lost 18 kilos. Yeah. So he's going to immediately feel better on that leg. Yeah. Because he's not having to carry the weights around. With the additional help of an anti-inflammatory, Ben's limp should soon be a thing of the past. He's been through an enormous ordeal today, an enormous ordeal. But he's one tough sheep. He's probably the toughest sheep you'll ever meet, our Ben Hall. It's going to look like a purple Dalmatian. To finish, Chris is applying antiseptic spray to help heal Ben's skin and prescribing some extra special TLC. <laughs> So he's pretty close to being back on track now. His life's taken a dramatic change. Yeah. The one thing I'd recommend, though, is that he stays in here for the next couple of days. Yeah. It, it, it would be like, right now, for him, taking a kid from the deserts of Australia and all of a sudden he's gone to, gone to Antarctica. Yeah, wow. Well, it seems ridiculous because it's, it's quite mild right now. Yeah. But for him, that's just been a huge change. While being Sean does seem like the end of Ben Hall's criminal ways, I wouldn't be so sure. It's been a real team effort. Yeah. But I think our fugitive is going to be feeling fine. I mean, he's already 
Yeah. He's raring to go. <laughs> yeah. I'd be reinforcing the fences at Edgar's mission because this guy knows how to escape. He likes his freedom. He'll be looking for it again. I'm actually heading out to the South Penrith Veterinary Clinic. So they've got a lot of injured animals that have been dropped off at them with burns and smoke inhalation. SASH emergency vet Lisa Chimes has been called to a clinic after devastating bushfires on the outskirts of Sydney. Hello. Well, Lisa, great that you could come. Thank you. We've been inundated with bushfire victims. Dr Robert Johnson has been working non-stop since the fires passed. Over here we've got possums and we've got more ringtails than I thought we'd get because I think they've all been displaced okay. from their habitat. They're normally shy and secretive animals. Oh, so. goodness. So, who's in here? So this is Patricia, so she's a little female brush-tailed possum. Patricia is suffering deep burns to her ears, face and feet. Those burns look pretty nasty and I think if we don't get onto them quickly, they're going to get infected and that's not going to be good news for her at all. So at the moment what we're doing is we're giving Patricia an anaesthetic and the reason for that is because she's a wild animal, she's not used to being handled by people, she's got really nasty burns on her ears, almost third degree burns. We've really got to treat these quickly otherwise she's not going to survive this. She's burnt the tip of her tail as well, poor little thing, huh? I'm just looking at Patricia's feet and just imagining that she was probably walking on a tree that was on fire. She's burnt the tips of her ears, she's burnt her face. Can you see that, Lisa? Oh, Look at those little curly whiskers. Burnt her whiskers. Yeah. Oh. It's just so upsetting to see burns on our wildlife. It has got to be agony. If these don't heal, Patricia's got no chance. What we're doing now is we're applying some really good antibiotic cream and we're hopefully going to stop any infection from setting up. It's early days. I don't know if we're ever going to be able to get Patricia to a point where she can be released, but all we can do is try. She'll wake up soon, hopefully. Yeah, honey. But Patricia is not responding. Wake up. She's survived a raging bushfire. She's come out with these burns. We just cannot lose her now. It makes me concerned that she's actually got some smoke inhalation in her lungs and, and that's what's causing this slow wake up. I really, really hope she comes out of this quickly. Pop her into a nice warm bed and hopefully she wakes up quickly. Oh, sweetie. Good girl. Patricia. <laughs> Good girl. Thankfully, she started moving. She started waking up. So, big sigh of relief from all of us, I think. Now, we just got to wait and keep treating these burns and hope like hell that they get better. We could give her some food while she's having a little lick. Give her some food now to distract her. I want something to eat. Aww. Patricia's feeding really well. She's tucking into this pureed apple and it makes me think that she's got a fighting chance. Oh, you're a good girl. With the Penrith surgery full, Lisa decides to take the recovering possum to the Bondi Clinic. Come on Patricia, let's go. What do we have here? She's yeah. got burns on her feet and on her ears. They're quite bad burns. Yeah. But overall, she just she just needs a lot of care. Bye, Patricia. I'll see you soon. Thanks, Andrew. I'll talk to you. See ya. Alrighty, Patricia. No more bushfires out here at Bondi. I'm just going to pop you into a nice cage with some flowers and a fruit salad. There you go. So the plan for Patricia now is to set her up with some food and water, give her a nice dark environment and just give her some rest. 
Lisa and all the vets here are going to take great care of you. Hey Lisa, how are you? Good, how's Patricia been? She's doing good. Yeah? Yeah, we've been making some good progress. Oh good, good. I'll go grab her, have a look. She wasn't in a very good way and we were worried about infection and whether she was even going to make it. So I'm really hoping that today she's looking a lot better. Hi! How are you going, Bubbly? Hey, what have you been eating? Oh, look at you. You look fantastic. She is a completely different possum. She's eating really, really well. This is a good sign. How are you doing? I know. She's definitely more feisty than mm. she was. That's for sure. Hey? We've noticed a lot of improvement in her ears. Yeah. They're not resembling crispy bacon as much as they were mm -hmm. when she came in. Even though they're not the most fashionable ears in town, the dead bits have fallen off and now new healthy tissue is growing and this is looking really good. Her paws have come down a little bit. Yeah, the tips of those toes have been burnt off and they're just starting to heal. Mm. There's some blood there, which actually means that there's blood supply and the tissue is nice and healthy. So it's going to take some time for them to return to normal, but it's definitely a huge improvement compared to how they look. Do you want any of this? Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me. We've been hand feeding her as much as possible just to stop her using those little hands. Yeah, no, that's really good and she's eating well, which is fantastic. Next time I pop in, I am hoping to see even more of an improvement and the way she's going, I think she's going to be just fine. She going? She's good. She's so much better. Good girl. Lisa is back at the Bondi Clinic for a final checkup on bushfire victim Patricia. It wasn't long ago that the possum was clinging to life. Oh, Her skin has healed very well. Oh my goodness, look at those ears. And she's got her spark back, so she's pretty keen to. You want to get back out in the bush, huh? Yeah. There you go. Oh, Wow, Ali, that is just a massive improvement. They were red, raw and oozing yeah. and completely scalded and now that's just normal tissue. So yeah, I'm, I'm amazed how well they've healed because there was barely any skin there. They're pretty amazing, resilient animals, aren't you, sweetness? When I met Patricia, she was this poor, helpless burn victim. And then I look at her now and she is full of beans. Her paws have healed up, her whiskers have grown back and she's ready to climb up that tree again. Come on Patricia, let's go. Come on. Come on Patricia, look where we are. Hello. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Patricia. This is Patricia. I'm here in Malgoa, which is in the Lower Blue Mountains, and I'm at the home of a carer called Pam. She works for Wires, and she's actually got an aviary here where Patricia's going to complete the last little bit of her rehabilitation. This is your new home. I think you're going to love it here. All I'm hearing is the piercing sound of cicadas, but that tells me we are in the bush and that is the perfect place for Patricia to begin the next part of her rehabilitation. Go, Patricia! Come on, oh, good girl! Look at you! Oh, so lovely. Hey, good girl! I really miss Patricia. She has been a fabulous little patient and hopefully in the not too distant future she'll be up at the top of the tree looking down on all of us. Be in touch. Please let us know how I she's going. Do. Thank yeah. you. It's an early start for Scott. He's on the road answering a call from rescue group All Dogs Matter. Their kennels are an hour's drive north from Richmond in Waltham Abbey, Essex. So there's thousands of dogs that are abandoned here in the UK every year, but not all of them find new homes. 
But I tell you what, it would be made a hell of a lot worse if it wasn't for the dedication of volunteers and staff at amazing rescue centres like All Dogs Matter. So when they say they've got a special case for me, I make it my absolute priority to get up and see them just as soon as I can to see if there's anything I can do to help. Hello, Mum. Hello, beautiful. Haven't you done well? But I, I can kind of see the problem. I'm almost certain she's probably had a caesarean having puppies this big in a tiny little dog like that. It's really small and the pups are really doing me. well. Yeah, they weren't going to come out the natural way, were they, honey? Jane is introducing Scott to the sad story behind Sadie and her three puppies. So Sadie was very heavily pregnant when she was brought into a vet clinic by her owners. She's only a baby herself. You've done so well, haven't you? Then she had a caesarean in order to deliver them. They were huge puppies. But of course, the bill was quite large and the owners simply refused to pay it, so they dumped her at the vet practice. All right, let's have a little look at this tummy, hey? If we just flip her onto her back like that, Jane, well done. Oh, lots of milk there for babies. Well done, Mum. We'd like to see if we can get her vaccinated as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah, that's fine. I brought the vaccinations today, all good. Thankfully, the team here at All Dogs Matter jumped in and saved Sadie, took the puppies here and then have reared them all together. They're a gorgeous little family and all three puppies have already got homes. Yes, just no more puppies, you're far too small. Okay, Sadie, be a brave girl. Brave girl, well done. Oh, I know, it's a little bit sore, isn't it, sweetheart? I know, brave girl. <laughs> Sadie's trying to be saved by one of her puppies over there, look at that. <laughs> I'll save you, mummy. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Oh my goodness, you guys are so cute. Let me have it. Oh, yes. Aren't you guys lucky you've already got homes, hey? How cool is that? But Scott's work is a long way from finished. So, Scott, I know you're having fun with the pups, but I was just bored. Another terrible case of neglect is arriving at the kennels. Hi, ladies. How are you doing? Hi. Who have you got for me today? Right. Oh, hello, gorgeous. Hello. Little honey in the back. So this is honey. Hello, beautiful. And wow. Not in very good condition. I only need a few seconds to see there's quite a few issues here, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. Hey, but you're incredibly gorgeous. It's very sweet. Oh. So we got a call today from one of the local pounds that we work with about a beautiful Sharpe that had been abandoned. She was on death row, uh, on the death row list, so she'd done seven days and was now ready to go. So we were asked if we could come over and help out. First of all, I can see this poor skin. She's scratching like mad, very red and very thickened, all these little scabs all over. So. It's almost certain she's got mange, the mange yeah. mite, uh, which basically runs underneath the skin, uh, is incredibly itchy, leads to this hair loss, and of course then a secondary infection where they're scratching themselves all the time. Sure. But of course, one thing we know mostly about Sharpe's is all these extra folds of skin. Mm -hmm. And what she's got, which is very classic of the breed, is entropian or inrolling eyelids. And what they're doing is rubbing on the protective surface of the eye, the cornea, and leading to an ulcer. But certainly, the longer that's left, the more chance that she'll become blind. Oh, really? OK. Oh, poor honey, we can't have that. Scott mm. needs to fix you. I would imagine that a dog like Honey, she's quite a rare colour, would have probably cost, say, at least £1,000. So research, you know, look at what you're, you're, you're buying. You know, you wouldn't buy a Ferrari if you couldn't afford the insurance, you know. And it's so stressful for them being abandoned. They can suffer not just physically, emotionally. It's so difficult for them not knowing what's going on in their lives. I'm going to do my best to make your face as beautiful as your personality, but it's already pretty gorgeous. It is. Scott's here to say today. Say the honey yeah, monster. It is. I'll do my best. They're the victims in this. They are literally the pawn in a terrible game of dog chess. I don't know why people think they deserve to have a dog when they treat them in this manner. Scott will now take Honey back to Richmond for surgery that will decide her future. In order for her to get the forever home, she does have some fairly serious hurdles to jump. We've got to get the skin sorted. And absolutely, the eye problem that she's got is severe. The procedure that we have to perform is complex. And sometimes this surgery doesn't work. There we go. All right. we'll so goodbye to Ira. next week. You'll be a good girl. Hmm? So it really is an unsure future, but fingers crossed, she absolutely deserves a second chance. Bye, Scott. Bye, honey. See you next week.
Hi, ladies. Hello. Oh, yes. Honey. Hi, honey. Hi. It's a big reception at Richmond for Scott's new patient, Honey. We've got a little bit of work to do on her face, so Gemma, yeah. you can take it downstairs, get everything ready for us, and I'm going to get into my scrubs. All right. All right. Come, on, Come on, honey, buddy. The one-year-old Sharpe was dumped after her owners discovered she had medical problems that were going to cost over a thousand pounds to fix. Well done. What do you think of her? Oh, look at her skin. I know. It's really bad, Little isn't it? Baby. Yeah, poor mangy girl. Hey, right. honey bun. So, we're just going to put oh. a catheter in your leg, OK? You're going to be a good girl. Give you some pre-med. I think she's just yearning for attention, any kind of attention, even a vet putting a needle in her arm. She's pretty pretty chilled about it. She's an absolute sweetheart. This is a really complicated procedure that I'm about to perform on Honey. She's such a lovely dog, but at the moment, she doesn't have a home and she doesn't have a future. So I'd better get this procedure right. So you can see there's horrible eyelashes. Look, there we oh, go. Wow. Yeah, and there's a little bit of oh, swelling no. of all the tissues surrounding the eye as well. So poor little girl. All right. Oh, you're gonna see the world. Yeah. You have to see the world again. I don't know how people can treat them like this. Look at her. No. You know, with everything that she's got wrong with her and how uncomfortable her skin must feel, she's still so lovely. I know. This procedure, you would say, is a bit like a facelift. It is lifting some skin away from the tops and the bottoms of the eyes in order for her to see. But this isn't a plastic surgery procedure that's just for her beauty and good looks. This is to try and fix her eyes, try and take away that chronic irritation, those in-rolling eyelids and the scratching that she must feel on the eyes as a result of the eyelashes. Oh, like to tell. I mean, they're so right. deep-seated and so covered. I'm really struggling to be able to actually even see the eye, so I'm... Um, yeah. Honey's lived her whole life in discomfort, I would imagine. This hasn't been a good life for her so far. Did you get a bit carried away with the clipping? In your nice wide surgical site, Gemma. <laughs> it's not about aesthetics here. Well, it is about aesthetics, so I'm actually giving her a face lift. Yeah. OK. Time for your close-up. Scott is about to start the operation which could change the life of Honey the rescue dog. In this delicate doggy facelift, he needs to take away enough skin to stop her eyelashes scratching her cornea, too little skin and the procedure will fail. So what I'm doing here is just taking away a section of tissue above the eye and then I'm going to stitch those sections of skin back together and what that's going to do is cause a bit of tension and it'll help to pull the eyebrow back. Yeah, it's obviously a pretty unattractive thing to watch, but it will give a functional result, which is a, a dog that won't have eyelashes rubbing up constantly against her poor eye. It has put me off going under the knife myself. I don't think I'll be having any plastic surgery. Um, bit gruesome for me, but it's perfect for Honey. It's going to really make a difference to her. What kind of stitch are you going to do? Is there a dressmaking stitch that you'd recommend? Or maybe an invisible slip stitch. Before Gemma changed careers, she was a successful fashion designer. Today, she's not holding back with her assessment of Scott's handiwork. I don't know if I'd uh, let him on a couture gown. They're not dainty enough stitches, I'm afraid. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> it's probably the same would apply, Gemma. I don't think I'd let you free on anything with a pulse. <laughs> Excuse me, I have you know, I've been learning my suturing. They're quite good. What have you been practising on? Um, on a bit of um, rubber. Thing. Exactly. <laughs> so me and Scott have a little bit of banter. When I first came for an interview, he said to me, well, you're no spring chicken. Um, and he didn't realise what he'd said until he'd said it, and then it was out there. He couldn't take it back. So um, I think that gives me the right to tease him occasionally. Yeah, she's going to let me on a live patient soon. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Make sure that I'm heavily sedated when that happens. <laughs> Make sure you're not in the building. <laughs> you know you me now. <laughs> That's going together really beautifully, isn't it? It's amazing. I'm really happy with the outcome. The eyelashes are now folding outside the eye where they're supposed to be, and hopefully, a much more comfortable future lies ahead. Yeah. 
So far, so good. I'm just about to move to the other eye. So whilst you're doing this to poor honey, yeah. all the puppies are in upstairs. I wonder what party. all their barking was upstairs. Yeah, puppy party time. You hear those playful barks and you think, you know what, I feel a little jealous. I want to get uh, up there and have some fun. But then I realise that the kind of presents the puppies bring aren't ones that I want to pick up. Nearly there, honey. You're doing very well. We'll get a skin sorted, we'll get a face and eyes sorted. And she'll be the beauty on the outside as well as in. So when are you booking in for your facelift? How rude. <laughs> <laughs> now he doesn't know what to say. So, there's the last suture on our little beauty. And fingers crossed, after that little facelift, she's just going to be a happy, healthy girl. But that, Gemma, is that. Now we've got to find her a home. OK, she can wake up now, probably. There we go. Here we go. Good girl. Hello, Hi. honey. Good girl. Hi. Hello. Hi. Look, you can see me. Yes. Yeah. Look, she's looking at me already. Hello. Honey. Honey. Oh, how cool is that? All right. Should we put sleep you back in a cage to sleep it off? Yeah. But while she Honey may be out of danger, <laughs> the vet may be in a bit of trouble. It must have really hurt because I could just tell by his face he was in agony. He's about to cry, I think. Did that bring tears to your eyes? It wasn't funny to Scott at the time, but I was dying inside. I couldn't laugh, but... Uh, I've got... Yeah. Both Scott and Honey will have to cope with a bit of swelling tomorrow. Good girl, you've done so well. That's the first big hurdle jumped. I'm just going to sort out your skin and find you a new home. Come on, gorgeous girl. Come on, beautiful. That's a good girl. It's 24 yes. hours since Honey's operation, so and the Sharpay's eyes have already opened up significantly. Any woman that gets a facelift is always going to be critical of the result, but the fact that Honey is following me around and uh, giving me kisses and cuddles, I think that client satisfaction is all good. Her uh, spatial awareness with the collars is a little bit questionable. She's smashing into almost everything. But you know what, it has to stop her from scratching those sutures and it's all important to get the result we want. Honey has also been ravaged by mange mites, which are still causing excruciating inflammation to her skin. Not much of a spa treatment today for poor Honey. Instead of having a shampoo that smells like lavender or a rose petal, it smells like petrol. Pretty disgusting. But the hope is, once we've killed off those nasty mites, she is going to have a beautiful, glossy, honey-coloured coat. Great teamwork. But there does seem to be a bit of truth serum in this bathwater. Vets never get involved in anything like this. It's very rare that they get involved in the dirty work. So it's always funny when they do, because they always do it wrong. <laughs> Nathan is only one of two male vet nurses employed at the practices. We're yep. surrounded by a bunch of very, very strong wills, women. You know, there's bloke solidarity with yeah. me and Nate. Especially when it comes to that time of the month. That's the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get it now, I tell you. <laughs> I think the guys secretly like being outnumbered, and they give as good as they get. And certain ones, certain boys, are more bigger gossip than the girls. I won't name names. <laughs> All right, honey, so you've got to dry off naturally. Oof. I tell you what, anyone that gets this dog is going to be lucky because she is an absolute delight. <laughs> Later that day, Nina from rescue group All Dogs Matter arrives to start Honey on her new journey. Hi there. Hi, I'm Scott. How are you? Hi, I'm Nina. Nice Hi, to meet Nina. you. Hi, Nina. And more right? importantly, very good. This is Honey. Hello, hello, little sweetheart. Oh Isn't she gosh, gorgeous? She's gorgeous? Very rewarding for the dog, for you as a human. When we see them progressing and finally landing on their paws, it's just wonderful. Gorgeous. Find Look at home. her. She's so cute. Look at those beautiful eyes. It's much better now. They're more comfortable. It was lovely to see the bond that Nina struck up straight away with Honey. And I tell you, the more and more she spoke to Honey, the more and more I wanted to speak. What a great accent. There's a kiss. Oh, no. There's a kiss. Oh, dear. And tongues. Well, that's very French. <laughs> <laughs> I told you she had the French side. 
Yeah. It's always sad to see them go, but I tell you what, she is an absolute stellar dog and she's going to find a great owner, I have no doubt. Hopefully, you'll let me come and do a house visit soon because I'd just love to see how she gets on. Of course. All right then, bye-bye, beautiful. Hey, good luck at your new home. I don't think it's going to be long before you've got a loving family to go to. Ooh, you're beautiful. All right, all the best. Thank you very see much you. for everything. Thanks so much for coming. See you later. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, honey. <laughs> see ya. Bye. Come on, pup. Good, good girl. girl. Got both. Another two weeks later, and Honey is looking very relaxed in her forever home. Good girl. The Sharpay's new family are Gwen, Philip, and their daughter Catherine. Honey also has two new doggy siblings. We saw her on the website, decided we really liked her, but she was actually at a foster home, so we were told we can go and see her. So we took Riley, the pug, with us to see how they got on. And me and my mum fell in love with her. So she came for a week and she just didn't leave. <laughs> she just stayed. So it, yeah, it worked out really well for her. Now we've got large, medium large, and medium small. medium and small. Which yes. I like that. I just hope she knows that she's staying here now. I'm not sure she knows that yet. Hello! <laughs> Hello, gorgeous girl. How are you? As oh, promised, so Scott's arrived to check up on one of his favourite patients. I'm elated to see just how comfortable Honey seems to be and uh, Catherine already seems to adore her. Well, let's have a little exam of her, shall we? Hello. Who are you? Hello. Who's this guy? This is Nelson. Hello, Nelson. Nelson. And you've got a pug over there as and well. And this is Riley over here. So <laughs> Riley. We've, got, we've got quite a collection here. Yeah. Let's have a little look at your eyes first. They do look fantastic. The scars have healed really well. They've both seen the same size and shape and you can start seeing those beautiful brown eyes mm, that she's, she's got, got as got well. She's got lovely eyes. Really do. And how's her skin been going? Even the two weeks she's been here, I think she looks a lot better. Yeah, well, she's certainly not itchy anymore, scratching herself to death and it definitely looks a lot less red, a lot mm. less sore, there's no scabs. From a behavioural point, she does seem very stressed here. She looks stressed, doesn't she? <laughs> you are so <laughs> chilled and happy in your new home, aren't you? I love Honey. I couldn't imagine our house without her now. She's just, she's my new baby. She comes to bed with me for half an hour every night and has a cuddle. Then she goes back downstairs and then she comes and wakes me up for work in the morning, <laughs> which is better than an alarm. It's a nice wake up call. As a vet, to treat a dog and see them getting better, that's one thing. But then to find a family in a home as great as this, for this great little dog, I'm absolutely over the moon, so, yeah. You deserve it, don't you, honey? Yeah, you're a lucky girl, and so are you. You're a lucky girl. <laughs> I am as well. <laughs>all dogs matter. They help to rescue and rehome abandoned dogs here in London. And they've just let me know of four dogs that have just come into their shelter that are in a really terrible state. Hello. Hello, you four. <laughs> Waiting for Scott is animal rescuer Sonia. Hello. Hi, baby. Hello, you. And the four new arrivals that were all saved from a local pound that could no longer house them. They all look horrific, don't they? Their fur is in patches and tatty or even non-existent on that little pom. I do think we need to have a little look at her and see what's going on. It was very clear from the get-go that the Pomeranian was the one that was struggling the most. She's the one that's lost the most amount of fur. Uh, she looks in the worst condition. She's very thin. She's struggling. I can see well clearly the biggest problem here is her skin and the complete lack of hair. So this has been going on for a while. She's lost a huge amount of fur as a result. Who would let their dog turn into this? Into I mean, it's state. disgusting. It really shocks me to the core and to see a Pomeranian look like that, I just don't know how the people here do it and I don't know how their hearts don't break every day. She's also coming pregnant. Oh, you're joking. So, yes. And what happened to the puppy? The puppy didn't survive. The puppy wasn't even, it wasn't even a proper pup, so it wasn't even fully formed. And so, it's sickening, yeah. isn't it? Really upsets you, doesn't it, yeah. to see this? 
heartbreaking. Everyone gets, everyone gets upset. You can't help it. You wouldn't be human if you didn't get upset about something like that. Sorry. You're OK. We're going to sort you out, eh? Don't we? Can we sort you out, eh? It's all right. Oh, hello. Hello. Mm. Wow, they're affectionate little ones, aren't they? Come on. All right, well, what I think we need to do is all these guys look like their conditions are quite manageable, but this little one clearly needs my help. Scott will now take the malnourished Pomeranian back to his Richmond practice. There you go. To find out just what is causing her dramatic hair loss. She's really stolen my heart, this yes. little one. Say goodbye Aww. to Sonia. Bye-bye, darling. We all get quite attached to the dogs down here. We might only spend a few days with them, but we, you know, we love them all as if they're our own, really. Okay. I never understand how people can be cruel to animals. They're defenceless, innocent creatures. Why would you be mean to them? Why would you hurt them or neglect them? I just don't get it. Take care. Bye-bye. Come on, then, beautiful. Scans everyone. Scott has arrived at the Richmond practice with the shockingly malnourished rescue dog that he's decided to name Kylie. What's the matter with her? Well, it's a, it's a long list of ailments that little Kylie's got going on, I'm afraid. It's so sad. You're in good hands now, little one. But the pint-sized Pomeranian is not the only special guest making an appearance today. Recently graduated vet Riaz is on his way to the practice for day one of his new career. I've been working for this for the last five years and now I can't wait to just get stuck in. Hey Riaz. Hey Scott. How are you doing mate? I'm good mate. How good. are you? The See rookie you will be spending a four week placement oh, at Scott's mate. practices. Yeah, five years. So and here's our consult room. Ah oh, and it's Emma. Hi. This is our head nurse, Hi. Emma. Hi. Nice Riaz. Nice to meet you. Riaz, new doing? grad. Fresh off the press. <laughs> How fresh are we talking? Oh, too fresh. Yeah, as in like a day fresh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Like yesterday. I'm glad the first person you met at the practice is our head nurse, because I would say, as a new grad, the person you want to be besties with is definitely the head nurse. So, the head vet, but you call the shots. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we've established this hierarchy on day one. Get it right from the offset. From the very beginning. So, <laughs> you, scrubs, you downstairs and I'll bring the dog. What Riaz doesn't know is just how shocking his first case will be. I thought today that Kylie would really help to flex Riaz's veterinary muscles. So guys, meet Kylie. Oh my God. A baptism of fire to try and understand everything that's going wrong with this dog and what we can do to help her. Right, well, let's get started then. Look how much hair she's lost. You can see right through to her skin and you shouldn't really be able to do that at all. We have virtually no history on this dog whatsoever, so we have to piece it together ourselves. When Scott told me there was no history, it was literally like a nightmare. I was like, oh, can't I just have an easy vaccination or something to do? But I'm happy to, to do that, so bring it on. I'm gonna start at the front of you, little girl, and work our way back, eh? Here, little look inside. Oh, darling, you're missing quite a few teeth as well, aren't you? Oh. Oh, Skin's quite darker as well in patches, that she must be really itchy. This is clearly something which has, you know, not happened overnight. I've never seen anything like Kylie. I think she's the first and hopefully the last time I ever see anything like that. I mean, just looking at her tummy and her mammary glands here, oh. she's clearly had puppies. Well, you'll be horrified to know that just two days ago, she uh, had a stillbirth at the kennels. She didn't, okay. Yeah, wow. Oh, mm-mm. Yeah. It's not fair, is it? When I heard that she'd lost a puppy, I, I lost it myself. I broke down. I don't know if it's a maternal feeling, woman to woman, but the thought of losing your baby in a stillbirth, um, just, it just made me feel for her. It's just not fair. So, Dr. Riaz, what do you think? I think what we should find out first is the skin problem, whether it is a simple skin problem, whether it's just a parasite or something like that, or there's an underlying cause, perhaps. I think we should start with some skin scrapes. 
Riaz is now carefully scraping away the top layer of Kylie's skin, trying to find evidence of the mites that are making her life a misery. Lovely. That's great. Good work. Good job. Good girl, honey. But the mites are notoriously elusive and can easily go undetected even under a microscope. Where are you, you little blighters? I'm in here somewhere. So guys, um, no mites found on this microscope slide. So what are we going to think about that? The fact that we haven't found it doesn't rule it out. So I think what we should do in the meantime is start treating for the mites and perhaps run an additional test to confirm the presence of it, something like a blood test. Samples of Kylie's blood will now be sent away to the lab to confirm the team's clinical diagnosis. It seems to us that the biggest likelihood is that Kylie is suffering with mange. And the best way to kill off a mange mite is by giving the dog a bath and start helping Kylie to recover and grow that fur back. Now you've got to give a dog a bath. Um, a very technical job. <laughs> I'm very qualified for it. Let's do it. Hi, honey. Are we ready for your bath? Oh. I know. There she is, the star of the show. I never saw her in my first day of being a vet. I'd end the day by bathing a Pomeranian. <laughs> there you don't, go. Don't say. Here you go. We don't know yet if we're treating for which type of mange, so we're just going to hit it hard. So I'm just going to not get her face too much. This bath is not the nicest thing. We're dressed up in masks and gloves because it's pretty strong stuff, and poor girl has just stood there taking it. So what we'll do with the rest of it is just sponge it on a little bit. You get free tummy rubs, hey? <laughs> hey, gorgeous. The way this works is it will kill the bugs from the outside and hopefully make her feel a lot less itchy, and she can start to grow some of this hair back. If it is just some bugs on the surface, then we should start seeing some progress in the next few weeks with regards to her hair coming back. I never thought that I'd get such an interesting, a bit of bizarre case as I have today. And with me, your first nurse. That's true. How does it feel to take... No, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> your nursing virginity. <laughs> I can't wait to see her full of hair again. I bet she's gorgeous. Riaz is just relieved all of Kylie's problems can be fixed. It will be several days before blood test results will confirm just what type of mange is afflicting Kylie. There you go. All right, honey. Gorgeous. But for now, this lucky survivor will return to the care of rescuer Sonia. All right then, honey. She'll build up the malnourished dog's strength and get Kylie ready for a loving new home. Say thanks, Riaz. Bye, gorgeous. <laughs> You're going to sleep well, aren't you? You'll never forget your first sort of patient, regardless of what it is. I think I'll remember Kylie forever. All right, honey. Get you some dinner. Should I get you some dinner? Well done. Look at you. Well done. Hello, Sonia. Hi, Scott. Oh my God, Hi. Kylie. It's been five weeks since Scott first met Thank Kylie. You. you look incredible. Doesn't she? She's an absolute vision, isn't she? She looks fantastic. Did you recognise her? Hardly. <laughs> well, first of all, she's got hair. Hair she's on like, the face. Look, look at me. Look at me. Her hair legs. on the legs. Hair on the tail. Look at that. Carly looks absolutely amazing. I can't believe this is the same dog. She looks beautiful. The blood tests amazing. have shown Kylie was under attack from the debilitating sarcoptic mange, better known as fox mange. So beautiful. I think what the irony is here is that she had fox mange, mm. and now she looks like and a fox. you look like a fox. <laughs> Don't you? You look like little foxy. Hey? Foxy Kylie. Kylie is just loving the attention, and she deserves it. So I say, go, Kylie. <laughs> It won't be long now before Sonia will reluctantly allow the little Pomeranian to leave her care and go to a forever home. She's just still there to be loved and to give love. Beautiful foxy Kylie. Yeah. Good girl. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.